The 2021 AP Chemistry FRQ question number three. This is a 10 point question. A student is given the task of determining the molar concentration of a copper sulfate solution using two different procedures, precipitation and spectrophotometry. For the precipitation experiment, the student adds 20 milliliters of 0.2 molar barium nitrate to 50 milliliters of the copper sulfate solution. The reaction goes to completion and a white precipitate forms. The student filters the precipitate and dries it overnight and the data are given in the following table. So our first question here is write the balanced net ionic equation for the precipitation reaction. So we have some copper sulfate solution and we're mixing it with some barium nitrate. So let's write that down. barium nitrate. Now both of these are solutions. So we're going to say aqueous. Then if we do a double replacement we're going to get copper with nitrate and barium with sulfate and we can see that we're going to get barium BaSO4 and we'll get CuNO3 taken twice. Now if we know our solubility rules we know that copper nitrate, any nitrate is going to be soluble so that's aqueous so if there is a precipitate, which there is, it must be the barium sulfate. Now if you know your solubility rules completely then you know that barium sulfate is going to be precipitate as well. Now that would be our molecular equation. We want the net ionic equation and at this point with this molecular equation it's a good time to make sure we balanced everything correctly and we can see we have one copper on each side, one sulfate on each side, two nitrate ions. Okay this is a nice balanced equation. So next anything that is aqueous will actually exist in solution as separate ions. So we're going to have copper 2 plus, we're going to have sulfate 4 2 minus, we're going to have barium 2 plus, and two nitrate ions. And the barium sulfate is not going to be as separate ions. It's a precipitate, so it's going to be together as an ionic solid. And then we have copper 2 plus and two nitrate ions. So we can see what's happening is several of these ions are not doing anything. They're spectator ions, so the nitrates are going to cancel. Same thing for the coppers are going to cancel. So the net ionic equation will be barium 2 plus and sulfate 2 minus turns into barium sulfate solid. On this kind of a, a problem you don't really need to write in the phases. You could say barium aqueous, Ba2 plus aqueous, sulfate aqueous barium sulfate solid. Um, I have a kind of a general rule that if you're not going to write anything that means it's aqueous. So writing this equation worth one point. Now part B says calculate the number of moles of precipitate. So now we know our precipitate is barium sulfate. So let's go back to our data. And so what do we have? We have dried precipitate and the filter paper together weighs 1.136 but the filter paper by itself weighs 0.764. So the mass of the precipitate will be 1.136 grams minus 0.764 which will be 0 0.372 grams of barium sulfate. I'm going to need that number down here in part B. Now if I want to go moles of precipitate I need the molar mass so I have already gone through and looked at the periodic table given on the test. Wrote down barium 137.33, sulfur 32.06 and four oxygens. Each oxygen is 16.00 so 64 added it up. So my equation here is going to be okay, 0.3 Seven two grams, two thirty three point three nine grams for one mole of barium sulfate, 
and that's going to give me an answer of 0 0.00159 moles of barium sulfate. Now, this is a two-point problem. One point is just for getting to the 0.372 grams. So, for example, if a student was uh, incorrect and they just used this number, the 1.136 grams, uh, they would get an answer. And if they used the molar mass correctly, they would still earn one point. So, one point for getting to 0.372, the other point for getting to the final answer, and that is two points. Now the last part here, calculate the molarity of the original copper sulfate solution. Now, back here in the equation, we can see that every time we make a mole of barium sulfate, we use a mole of copper sulfate. So the number of moles of barium sulfate will be the same as the copper sulfate. We're just going to have that dissolved in a 50 milliliters of solution. So to do the molarity, we have our moles 0 0.00159 moles. Now that was barium sulfate, but now we know that's the same as the copper sulfate. And divide by the volume, which was 50 milliliters. And we all know that 1,000 milliliters is contained in one liter. So our molarity will be 0 0.00159 times 1,000 divided by 50, 0 0.0319 molar. And getting to that point, another point. So we have four points so far. Now for the spectrophotometry experiment, the student first makes a standard curve. The student uses a 0.1 molar solution of copper sulfate uh, to make three more solutions of known concentrations. So instead of the 0.1, they're going to dilute it to 0 0.05, 0 0.03, and 0 0.01 in 50 milliliter volumetric flasks. So calculate the volume of the 0.1 molar copper sulfate needed to make 50 milliliters of 0 0.05 molar copper sulfate solution. Now the dilution formula is volume times molarity before you dilute it equals the volume times the molarity after you dilute it. So we're looking for this volume x times a 0 0.1000 molar solution is equal to 50 milliliters times the 0 0.05 molar solution. We can divide both sides by 0 0.1000 and we can see that we're going to end up with half of 50 milliliters, so our answer is 25.00 milliliters of solution. When we do this, that's worth one point. Now, part E says briefly describe the procedure the student should follow to make this 50 milliliters of 0 0.05 molar copper sulfate using the 0 0.1 molar copper sulfate and a 50 milliliter volumetric flask and other standard laboratory equipment. Assume that all appropriate safety precautions will be taken. So, what we need to do is measure out that 25 milliliters of the uh, uh, 0.1 molar solution, copper solution. And to do this, we're going to measure 25.00 milliliters of the 0 0.1000 molar copper sulfate. And to do this, we want to measure that very carefully. So one of the best ways to do this is with a volumetric pipette. Now, if you've used these, you know that it's like a large straw. But what happens is it has a little bulb in here. And this is only good for making one 
measurement and that measurement in this case will be 25 milliliters and you have a line right here that is marked for each one of these individually so that the, you have to pull the liquid up to that point usually you would have some kind of a, a bulb rubber bulb maybe or there's another kind of device you can use it to pull this up you would not do that by mouth so you could use a volumetric pipette other things if you don't have those a graduated cylinder would work or maybe if you have your liquid in a burette that would work so any of those three would get you credit but something that is uh, very precise you wouldn't just use a, a beaker marked off to 25 milliliters that would not be very good now you're going to put that into a volumetric flask and in this case here you have to uh, since you're making 50 milliliters of solution then we need a 50 milliliter volumetric flask you put your 25 milliliters of the copper sulfate in and then you're going to add distilled water to the 50 milliliter mark talking about measuring the 25 milliliters with a device that is uh, precise enough for this kind of a work okay is worth one point and then say you're going to add the water up to the 50 milliliter line that is worth the other point so this is two points for part E okay now we have the standard curve so this is the curve we're going to get by measuring the absorbance of those different samples of the copper sulfate the absorbance of copper sulfate solution of unknown concentration turns out to be 0.219 so determine the molarity of the solution so from this graph we can say okay this is 0.219 if we look kind of closely here this is here's a line for the 0.2 and here's a line for 0.4 so this line in between must be the 0.3 mark and we're saying that our solution is at 0.219 so that would be about a fifth of the way from here to here so I'm going to say it's right about there now if we go across from there as carefully as we can and then go down then we could see that our concentration is going to be somewhere between that's 0 0.2 this would be 0 0.3 somewhere between 0 0.3 and 0 0.4 and I'm going to kind of guess that that is 0 0.035 molar we can't go more significant figures than that even though these are are written off with lots of significant figures you know we're estimating we know it's a uh, we know it's 0 0.03 but we're estimating but it's about halfway about 0.5 so it's only a two significant figure number now on the actual um, grading standard then there is a range of numbers that are accepted for this and so as long as the number is anywhere between 0 0.32 0 0.032 molar and uh, up to 0 0.038 molar anywhere in there that earns one point so it depends on you know, how you're going to read this graph so you're given a little leeway with this now there's another way you can do this and that is by looking at the slope the slope of this line you know is going to be the rise over the run and so if we were to figure out the slope of this line then the slope stays constant you know so it would be the same slope for your sample as it would be for this whole line so if I look at this kind of closely I'm thinking uh, that last point looks like about 0.6 maybe 0.62 maybe 0.63 and again I'm estimating that last second digit so that is um, only two significant figures so I can go down here and say well so 0.63 over 0 0.100 that's an easy number is going to be that's the uh, curve and my sample 0.219 is absorbance over X and these are molarities the absorbances I have no units so 0.63 over 0.1 is the same as 0.219 over X and we can go back here and calculate and when I do I get again 0 0.035 and that is worth that one point so you could do it graphically or you could do it mathematically both of those are excellent answers now after last part here G 
a second student performs the same experiment, there are a few drops of water in the cuvette before the second student adds the copper sulfate solution of the unknown concentration. Will this result in a copper sulfate uh, concentration for the unknown that is greater than, less than, or equal to the concentration determined in part F? Justify your answer. Well, we know a cuvette is a little square um, test tube. And if there was a little drop of water or so inside there, and then you added your copper sulfate, then this would be diluted. And if it's going to be diluted, then the absorbance is going to be less. And so therefore, you're going to say that the concentration must be less. So our answer is less than. And by doing that, we're going to earn one point. And our uh, justification is also worth one point. And the idea, because there's drops in there, our sample will be diluted. So the absorbance is going to be less. And since we're saying that the concentration is proportional to the absorbance, then our concentration will be less. And that is question three, 10 points.